Uh, Nick, we start with just a word on Andrew Durante's contract extension. Was there ever any doubt that you would want to try and keep him at the football club? There was never any doubt. He's a fantastic player and a great leader on and off the field. He's just a great person to have around. He's the best captain I've ever worked with. Maybe I shouldn't say that. There's a, he's as good a captain as I've ever worked with. <laughs> I shouldn't really have said that, but never mind. He's a pleasure to work with. He's a, he's a terrific player. And uh, I think he's got three, four years more than him, not just two years. Um, but it's good to see he's re-signed. Was it a long discussion you had with him, or was it just pretty much a tick of the box? It took about three and a half seconds, and uh, and uh, I was really glad that he, he decided to join us or sort of stay on for another two seasons. Is this going to be the start of uh, of some other re-signings from your, your your squad who are off contract into this season? Yes, that's uh, my my priority now. Is look, we've got seven games to go. Five of them are at home. We really want to win those games. We've got to rely on other teams losing, but if we can really perform and play some good football and win a lot of those games, then at least it puts a couple of teams under pressure that are just inside the six. And, and that's we want to put on a display for our own fans. Second thing is to make sure we re-sign re a lot of these players. And the more players we re-sign, the better, because we've virtually turned over in the last uh, two and a half seasons. We've turned over a lot of players. We've now got a good, young, technically sound team of boys. And uh, and after we re-sign players, we're looking at uh, signing and recruiting maybe a couple of other players, attacking players and defenders. But we're, we're in a good position moving forward for this club with the 10 years uh, extension all sorted out with our chairman. And it's really important now we retain players and sign good players. But we've still got seven games to go that we want to impress our fans. A couple of uh, uh, selection things tomorrow night. Um, Alex Rodriguez, is he back in the mix? Alex is really looking really good. Yeah, I'd, I'd say he's so good that he, he'd be starting. Um, we've got a question over our, uh, Blake Powell, who, who scored uh, four terrific goals against the Wanderers. Um, he's a bit tight in the hamstring, so we'll, we'll leave that decision until tomorrow. But uh, I've already decided one way or the other that Logan Rogerson will be on the bench, uh, so we'll give him some game time. Only because he's performing really well at training and he's earned it. It's not because we're giving anything away now. We want to do extremely well moving forward. Ben Sigmund? Ben Sigmund was terrific when he came off the bench. It's great to have these characters back, these leaders, on-field leaders. So Ben Sigmund will definitely be on the bench. I don't think his fitness is up to a level yet where he's ready to start, although I have to say that uh, the seven or eight minutes he was on, he turned the game for, for us against the Mariners and we were a wee bit unlucky with his service to Louis Fenton that we didn't get an equaliser, it was a great serve from Berrigiti. And uh, with, with no Blake Powell possibly, and no Hamish Watson suspended, no Roy, are you playing up front? Uh, we've, 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 I have to say we had a team meeting, there's lots of our players putting their hands up to, to have a run up front. <laughs> And uh, we've, got, we've got midfielders who are attacking midfielders that can certainly do that job. And uh, we've, with the squad we have, you know, possession will be a big part of the game. And if you've got the right possession, got the possession in the right areas, it's, we just want someone to tap the ball in. So it's really getting players inside the six yard box. That's the plan. Back to those players that you said before about re-signing, how high on that list is maybe Roy Krishna? Like we haven't seen him play for a while, but how much do you want him back? Uh, Roy, Roy would be close to the top of the list because it's all about uh, quality strikers and goal scorers. So Roy will be close to the top of that list. Uh, as are a lot of players, a lot of players. I, I think we'll, we'll make an announcement soon on several of them. And the good thing about this club is it's the type of club that players want to stay at. And now, especially with the 10-year licence re-signed, now you know, there are a lot of players from other clubs that want to come to this club. Uh, we're seen as a club on the up. It doesn't show where we are in the, in the ladder at the moment, and that's my fault. But um, we're certainly going to give everything we can for the last seven games. Seven games. And back to Roy too, I've heard he's been organising a wee care package and everything. All the players have been rallying around it. What can you say about that? And uh, um, Roy has been a tremendous ambassador for PG and football and for our club. So I think he's got a lot of the players involved in that. I know that I looked out some clothes and t-shirts and. And he did say to, to me, he says, Ernie, we don't need puffer jackets for Fiji. <laughs> he says, a few more t-shirts and shorts and things, though. We've all, we've all trying to help Roy out, and I think that's a great effort on behalf of Roy.
so there'd be a few more people in Fiji wearing Phoenix gear, I guess. There already would have been a few. I, I got some designer level t shirts that I've put in. <laughs> and actually, I've just remembered a couple of my t shirts actually have my initials on them. And I know that uh, the Phoenix is well supported throughout the islands, especially Fiji with Roy there. So hopefully, there's some very happy kids. Is there a bit more of a relaxed feel to, to this week? Like you sort of said last week, you know, playoffs aren't, aren't really there now. Is that, does it give the team, like, I guess, more of a free licence now, that a bit, bit more fun and cause those upsets, like you said? I, I, I hope they're not too relaxed. Um, I hope they, they, they maybe don't feel stressed and pressured, but I just think they're dying to play in front of the home crowd. And uh, the way we talk, we have a meeting every Thursday morning, and the way they were speaking at the meeting, we're really keen to put on a good performance and uh, take all three points and at least pressurise the teams that, that are in the six that might you know, have a lot of games and to, to worry about because they want to hang in there, especially a team that might be in the Asian Champions League because that's a horrendous schedule. So it's all about us now doing as best we can in front of our home crowd. Melbourne City are clearly the best attacking side in the league, statistically anyway, 50 goals they've scored. Do you, do you legislate especially for the likes of Fornaroli and Moy? I think we've, we've got the right players um, to cover their attacking threat and uh, and that that is obviously a concern we've got to look at that but they're also one of the teams in the league that's conceded the most goals and that's where we've got the cash in as well so it's a case of how well we attack and, and how good our structure is, more than individual players. And the same in defence, we rely on our structure and the way we play and the offside line we hold, rather than be too concerned about what they do. But there's no doubt they've got a couple of very good players up front.